What up, what up, everybody? It's Magic Knight Zaddy Cody, and here we are with the Green Powerhouse Tech Deck. If you like green and mono, and you like aggro, and you like a little bit of stompy, this deck's for you. It is not only an amazing deck, it is my favorite current deck. It's a standard deck that will stomp over the modern decks. <laughs> What does every great standard green deck have? A great henge. Wouldn't you know? A great henge, dude. If you don't know what this card does, it is a legendary artifact, about $50. You're gonna be dropping bucks on this, but I pulled it. It was my mission to pull that. In the previous videos in the channel, see. By the way, I wanna know, I wanna know that if you wanna see this green powerhouse deck go to work, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to see it run through the gauntlet. It's gonna be incredible. Let's talk more about the Great Henge. By the way, you're only running one of them. One Great Henge, I ain't dropping $100. <laughs> I'll tell you how much this deck costs. It ain't gonna be the prettiest of your pennies, but it will be one of your pennies. The Great Henge costs X less to the cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. And then you get to tap it on turn for two mana, and you gain two life. What else can you do? Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you get a plus one, plus one counter on it, and you get the draw card. This one single drop will save the entire game for you. It will gain you life, it will gain you mana, and it will get you card draw and boost your creatures. This is one of the best cards, in my opinion, in standard and potentially ever made. That's a little biased, but that's my opinion. This drops, so you can get it down to a total of two if you have a power seven on the field. Most of the time, it's gonna you're gonna have power five on the field, maybe a little bit more, but power five is usually where you'll get it to. So you're talking a total of four mana to drop this, and then you get two back, so a total of two. Enough about the, the Great Hens. We all know how powerful this is, and you only need one of them. I would run two if I had to, so that's up to you. If you have it, you have it. We're going to talk about Vivian, Monster's Advocate, a phenomenal Planeswalker. This lady right here. Okay, she comes in with three loyalty, and you can look at the top card of your library at any point. Okay, If it's a creature card, you can cast it from the top of your library. Which is beautiful because it's extra cards that aren't necessarily in your hand. So... It's safe from hand hates and removals like that. Um, so, and, and you're constantly like essentially scrying without doing the full scry, right? But not only does she do, does that, but um, if you do a plus one, you get a three, three green beast creature token. Uh, and you can put a reach counter on it, on it. You can put a trample counter on it or a vigilance counter. Dude, so you're getting a 3-3 body on the ground. And if you need a reach counter because you got a flyer coming around, right? Put it on there. You need the trample through? Put it on there. You need some vigilance? Put it on there. You have options for plus one. That's amazing. I mean, that, that for a green mono, this Planeswalker is the one plus it's like Coria standard. Like I said, this is a standard build for a little bit longer. Uh, for minus two, when you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost and put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. That's huge. So you got a four drop, you can put a, you can put a uh, three drop out for free. And that synergizes extremely well. We only, um, only need one Vivian, by the way. Beautiful artwork, artwork, right? Beautiful. One Vivian. And we're gonna run one of the, <laughs> dude, this deck, two questing beasts. <laughs> Talk about abilities for four. It's a four, four legendary creature, right? It's got vigilance, death touch and haste. And it cannot be blocked by creatures power two or less. So all these little guys on the field <laughs> can't stop it. Bounces right through, as soon as you drop this thing, you're automatically going to be able to attack. You don't have to worry about it being tapped because it's got Vigilance, right? And it's got Death Touch. And so that just deals with a lot of issues right there. You people aren't going to want to block this. 
And if they are, they're going to lose a creature. And sometimes it's worth the trade. And if it's a little guy, then it doesn't matter. But any damage that is dealt by creatures you control cannot be prevented. So any cards that specifically state prevent damage this turn ain't going to happen. No fog, no none of that. And then whenever you deal damage to an opponent, it also deals that much damage to your opponent's Planeswalker. Don't attack the Planeswalker with the Questing Beast. Don't do it. And also remember that it does, you know, because I've, you'll see in, in the gauntlet, I forgot to trigger this, which could have changed the entire game, right? A 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four drop with all those abilities, pff, put two of them in your deck. Yeah, you can run four if you want, but... I think it's it's overkill. You don't need that much. It's, it's just eating up space. Just one little Nessian Horner Beetle next, right? I only run one of them. I We do have a sideboard for this deck, but real real powerful because he's a 2-2. And at the beginning of the combat, if you have a power 4 or greater, he'll get a plus 1, plus 1 counter. It's a good little ramp, little boost. You're going to be running a lot of 4 power creatures in this deck, so... This is gonna get boosted a lot. Plus, it's just it's just annoying. So people are gonna to want to get rid of it. We got Yervo, Lord of Garenberg, one of my favorite cards. Dude, this guy is amazing. A three drop for four four. Every time another green creature comes into the battlefield, you get to put a plus one counter on Yervo. And if that creature's still more powerful, you get to put another plus one counter on it. Now, I run four of him because he's the main engine. He has so much synergy because obviously we're running mono green, right? So we're constantly boosting Yervo. Nobody wants to keep this guy on the field. Three drop, perfect three drop. Let's see. Let's lay. I'll show you. Gilded Goose is another one in the deck. You drop turn one, Gilded Goose in the turn two. You turn two, you literally have Yervo on the field already. That's how aggro this can be. That's one of the plays, but. This guy just going to be synergizing all over the place. I mean, you got the Great Henge bringing out people. You're going to be constantly pump, pop, pumping counters on Yervo. It's it's incredible. Um, and he might not last long, but he might. I mean, this guy, I've got him up to 15, 15. Like, he's incredible. This whole deck can be played on Arena, by the way. I know this is paper, but you can't play this on Arena. And on uh, the deck list, the link that you can copy to Arena will be in the description as well. Yervo, four of them. Underrated. I don't see him any anymore in standard. I don't see him anymore in standard. I really don't know why, but Yervo's fantastic. I have a personal love for him, so maybe I'm a little biased, but he works, dude. I got the mythic in uh, arena with this deck, so this isn't no this isn't some joke of a green aggro deck. This thing will take you to mythic. You might grind just a little bit and you know. It's always changing D and D and all that. We got love, love. We're in love with the love struck beast, dude. Three mana. It's a five five. But you want to play it for a sorcery first, right? Because you just want to, you want to get it out for one. Heart's desire is going to create a one one human. Whenever you say human, one one human. By the way, you got to go one one human. Okay, I'm dropping a one one human on my turn one. He's a great turn one guy because it takes. Once you do that, this goes into the Venture Exile, whatever you want to call it, no longer in the hand. Yes, it's revealed to your opponent, but they can't do anything. They can't exile, they can't discard it from your hand. They can't exile, like it's it's just sitting there. And the you need the 1-1 one, one human to attack with this guy. He can't attack without his 1-1 one, one human, uh, sorry. He can't attack without, his one, without a 1-1 one, one creature, which is important because there's other 1-1 one, one creatures in the deck that Plus, every now and then you're going to have a 1-1, one, one, right? So not necessarily you need a 1-1 one, one human to attack with. And that's just small downside. He can still block. So he's a body on the field. He can still block as a 5-5. Five, five. Three drop in total of four, spending four mana. Plus having that extra, you know, side hand, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> Synergizes with Yervo once again. I actually only run three your uh three love strucks, okay? Next up we got Stone Coil Serpent. <laughs> two of them. Really need two stone coils. He's he cost X, so he could be zero. 
and he'll die but sometimes that triggers for you know good for thing uh for other for the co other cards poten potentially right you could just drop him as a one drop it's not dumb to drop him as a one drop whatever x is is his power and the uh toughness so i'll drop him as a one drop because really like he's most efficient because he has reach and he has protection from uh multicolored plus he has trample come on now reach protection from multicolor and trample early game stone cold serpent you're taking care of the demir rogues that are multicolored right you can just block with this and and, and he can reach right you can wait till late game when you have eight ten mana whatever it may be and you drop a ten ten bam a trample right at any point at any time this is going to be a good drop if you if if you need it he's there stone coil is there for you two stone coils now we're going to an another legendary artifact called the Oslith. maybe it's pronounced differently i don't care it's the Oslith to me and that's what it's going to be in, in the group of friends correct me if, if i'm wrong it doesn't matter the Oslith from the wizard of oz okay legendary artifact this is perfect for the green mono why because whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield if it had plus if it had uh, counters on it counters sorry not plus one if it had counters on it you put it on the Oslith, and in the beginning of combat of your turn you take those counters and you may put them onto a target creature so if your row is a pump to a 1515 you get all those counters you can keep moving them back and forth to more over and over again to all your creatures the more you keep pumping them you're not losing those counters when those creatures are dying it's fantastic obviously they can destroy the artifact and poo poo for that but it doesn't matter it's still another thing they have to get rid of because they don't want these things on the field it's just gonna get worse everything that comes out with this deck is a threat it's a threat it's gonna be dangerous either now or later it doesn't matter the Oslith one Oslith oh counters with the Oslith vigilance counters uh trample you know when you Vivian we're just Vivian puts a trample counter a vigilance counter or a reach counter on on your uh, three three beast token those counters are going to Oslith if you have it out any point in time drop your Oslith gonna be an issue people don't like dealing with it just you only need one because i don't really need to it's a legendary artifact for one um so you can't put two in at the same time and you're just not i don't see much more value than just putting one it's a good it's just it's a good uh, single card uh you're got a winner this guy is rough but you could sideboard him out i'd be honest like this guy's probably not as powerful as i like it to be but he's fun because he's a 3-3 three, three for a 3-drop, right? Whenever he attacks, untap each snow permanent you control. So if you had a bunch of snow permanents, it would be even better. But the most important thing is we have run snow lands in this deck. So you attack with him, you will untap all your snow lands. Plus Yorn untaps too, so he technically is Vigilance, right? Um, he's legendary, snow creature, so you're gonna play one, uh, you can only play one at a time, but I run two in the deck good addition garux harbringer or garuk i think it's it doesn't matter right what does it matter we're here we're having fun we're playing magic doesn't matter i'm gonna call it garuk's harbringer because he's a three drop that's exactly why i'm calling it he's hex proof from black he's a four three and whenever it deals damage you're gonna look at that much that many cards off the top of your library and you may reveal a creature card or a garuk's flameswalker garuk whatever from the top of it and put it into your hand and then put the rest in the bottom of your library in random order now you're not losing cards they're not going in the graveyard they're going to the bottom could be worse right but this is good for technically card draw right we're talking about getting a little bit of card draw we're, we're looking at four cards at the top of our library and we're getting to put a creature that we need in from from those four into our hand now if this was a pumped up to whatever a five five, uh, five four whatever then you look at five right it could keep getting better essentially and you're not losing it you know you might um you might not pull what you want to, so you could miss but it, it honestly works out more than you think it would 
And um, if you did want run a Garouk uh, Planeswalker, this is even better. But it's still really good, and people don't want to get hit by it because they don't want you to seeing all those cards. You're, you know, you're scrying and drawing one, right? Basically, if if you and plus like, what if you have if you're getting a mana flooded, right? And you look at the top four, and it's all four mana, and you're like, God, well, you can take all those and put them on the bottom of the library, right? get the next four turns you're not getting flooded anymore right and you, you can keep that process or you can just keep back as a defender we're gonna run to garuk harbinger toski bearer of the secrets i think we all know about toski and the legendary scroll right first of all he cannot be countered get out of here blue he's a one one four drop sounds crazy right but he's also indestructible so that saves him from most of the time from getting removed um, but he has to attack each turn if he's able to. That's kind of annoying. It's, it is what it is. But whenever a creature you control deals damage to a player, you get the draw card. So if you if you deal four, if you're attacking and you and you attack and you deal damage with four creatures, you're dr drawing four. You know, you, it's a good card draw. I only run run one of them because I don't need to draw my entire deck and and throw away cards. Right, only one of them. Ocam Adversary. Could be sideboard if you want to, but it's a death touch. It's a four drop, but it does cost two less if your opponent controls a green permanent. So if your opponent has any green permanent on that field, he only costs two now, right? And whenever he deals damage, you get the draw card, more card draw. So this is helping you tremendously with the card draw, right? Death touch, not many people are gonna block with that, plus you can defend with it and get rid of some things. You can force plays to happen. Ocam Adversary. We are running two Ocam Adversaries. Also another way to get card draw. Garouk's Uprising. Rise up. This is extremely powerful. One, because it's a three drop. And if it enters the battlefield while you control um, a creature with power four or greater, you get the draw card. Bam then everybody that you all the creatures you control have trample bam that's huge in a green deck a lot of times you have a lot of good green creatures but they just don't have trample right this gives everybody trample makes everybody a big threat and, it, and most of the time it's going to be able to finish uh off for lethal and every time you drop a power four or greater which we're dropping a lot of power fours in this deck you get the draw card bam card draw trample Garouk's Uprising, two enchantments that you want in your green deck. In Search Greatness, Kaldheim card. It is very good. It has stayed in my deck ever since that set released. Because I, I initially built this deck with Throne of Eldraine, and that was, that was when this deck got built. And I've slowly made some additions since then. A uh, real quick shout out, the Ranger class. If I had that card, I would probably put that in potentially over In Search of Greatness um that's a very good green deck uh green card for from the dnd set but right now we have in search greatness it's a mana ramp it could if you have the right hand and of the mana curve in this deck works out perfectly for it he's got one drop two drop three drop four drop five drop every upkeep you either get to scry one right or you can cast a permanent from your hand with um from your hand with the converted mana cost equal one equal to one plus the highest converted mana cost among other permanents you control without paying its mana cost mana cost mana cost mana cost free drops you got a, a one drop out next turn you can drop a two drop for free next turn you can drop a three drop four drop five drop and that we go up to five right so we can go one two three four five for free bam aggro in your face you cannot keep up with it if you have the right hand and most of the times you actually might even if it's a two to a three even if you just get it to do it once from a three to a four from your vote to questing beast your vote to questing beast that's a three to a four drop holy shit you are just going off because you really this is a cool thing you only really only need two to three land on the field to really run this entire deck because you could just if you get this out early and have the right hand pff, good luck two in search of greatnesses and the little boy guilty guilty boy guilty goose every time he drops in the field you're gonna want to say wah, 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 okay 
Guilty, guilty goose, dude. Creates a food token when he comes out. He's a one drop. He's a zero one, uh, zero, sorry, zero two flyer. Pfft, sorry to offend you, guilty goose. Zero two flyer. So there, we don't really run flyers. Um, we have the reach stone coil. So guilty goose is going to be the other way they take care of flyers. It's going to be a good defense um, if you need them. But you really want to utilize him for the food because that food token you can with Gilda Goose, you can tap and sacrifice that food token to gain one mana of any color. That's how you're going to get uh, ramped up even quicker. So that's what I was saying. You drop a Gilda Goose, turn one, and then turn two, you automat already can drop your bow. Because now you have two land on plate and a, and a uh, food token for a mana. That's three. Bam. You got your bow and Gilda Goose out already. And if you don't want to use the food, food token later for health, if you need three life, sacrifice that uh food token right and you can keep creating food tokens for two in a tap it it's a extremely good one drop i only run two of them we don't need i used to run four we don't need it um elysian carotid once again if i'm mispronouncing it it doesn't matter okay elysian carotid um it's a two drop a one one it's a man uh dork whatever you want to call it but it's really good because you get the tap for one man of any color. Or if you control power four or greater, once again, we have power four or greaters. You get to create two mana of any, of any color, any one color. That's huge. You only have, you're, you only have two mana on the, on the ground. You can create a total, you know, you, you, there's so many different ways this is going to come into your benefit. I actually only have one. Um, I found it just, I don't need it all the time, but it, if it's out there, it's going to benefit you no matter what. It's free, it's mana. It, you don't need to block, if you have to block with it, block with it. Big, big boy, but little boy, scavenging ooze. <laughs> you got some scavenging ooze on your shoulder. Whoops. Get it off. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. But this is, Mill, Mill hates this deck. I mean, Mill, <laughs> yeah, Mill don't like it either, but... Mill don't like scavenging ooze specifically because you pay one without tap, just pay one green, and you get to exile a target creature or a target, sorry, target card from a graveyard, whether it's yours or the opponent's, and you get to put a plus one counter on scavenging ooze and you gain one life. You're getting two things plus one counter and gain life. The third thing, didn't even say three things, the third thing is removing cards from the graveyard. Which is going to be important for mill decks usually because they are going to rely on how many cards you have in your graveyard. And it, it's going to give you health if you're in a pinch. I get this thing out if if I see my opponents playing the Demir Rogues, specifically meta. This is the card that is going to halt them in their tracks. I run two of them. Um, and it, plus it gives you life and it, it pumps things up. This is another card that Mill hates. Because usually there's some sort of artifact enchantment that they need to keep running. But it, either way, Gem Razor is a 4-drop or a 3-drop for a Mutate. You know what the best part about mutating on to Yervo or any other creature with counters on it? If I drop um, Gem Razor on a Yervo because he comes out as a 4-4, four, four, but it, that's four, because it's 4 counters. So four, four countered, uh, four plus one counters on it. Gem Razor comes out, and if I mutate on your bow, your bow turns into an eight, eight, because the counters are going on top of it. If that makes sense, like I'm trying to explain it, but you know what I mean. Counters will go on, or are, are separate from the actual mutate, so they'll actually go back onto it and turn it into an eight, eight. And let's say it's Stone Coil Serpent. Once again, you drop that for four you drop it for one you mutate bam but the best way to mutate is to mutate from gem razor onto your bow because of the big boost it's going to turn into an eight eight it goes from a four four to an eight eight and then you get to destroy an opponent's um artifact or enchantment that could be the whole entire game for your opponent it could be a win con enchant enchantment it could be an artifact that just being an asshole on the table it could be anything, and this is going to get you out of the pinch. Beautiful artwork by Coria, too. 
Jim Razor is the man, the creature. Blizzard Brawl, control. We're going into control. Not a lot of green uh, mono decks are going to have all this control. We're talking about Blizzard Brawl. Phenomenal. This is another reason why we're running Snow Permanents. Or Snow Land, should I say. It's a Snow Sorcery. If it was an instant, it'd be better. But choose target creature you control. And then and target creature you don't control. Those two are going to fight. If you control three or more um, Snow Lands... Or snow permanence. If you control three or more snow permanents, the creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, and indestructible to, until end of turn. For one, you can remove a lot. A lot. So you got a pesky little death touch that you can't deal with. Bam. Blizzard Brawl. You got three snow permanents. You're good. Because guess what? You're going to be able to fight it. And the, that personally is one of my favorite ways to remove things instead of, and especially in, in green, I, it's one of the few ways, right? To force them to fight. Because you're only going to do that if you're going to win the fight, right? So now you're forcing things. They would never block. They would not block with that, right? But because of Blizzard Brawl, they're going to block it. They have to. They, I mean, they have to fight it, not block it. And that's just going to force. And that's not combat damage, by the way, when they fight. Totally different from uh, combat damage. Another way we're going to fight is Primal Might. <laughs> it's one green and an X. An X. We're going to run three of them. Why are we running three of them? Because it's a phenomenal card. Primal Might is a bitch to deal with. Because it gives target creature X plus one counters. And forces the creature to fight another creature that you don't control. So anything you need to pump up with, if you have enough mana... You're pretty much going to be able to deal with with Primal Might. Three of those. Another one. Another control. Ram through for two. Target creature deals damage to um, equal to its power to a creature you don't control. If the creature has Trample, by the way, it deals excess damage to that creature's controller instead. So, Garuk's Uprising, where it gives everybody Trample. And bam, Ram through gonna ram right through with that trample damage last but not least castle garenbrig very good land card nothing too crazy besides it does not come in tapped if you control a forest you're gonna control a forest that's almost guaranteed right you just don't want to drop it as it you don't want to open up your hand with only castle garenbrig two castle garenbrigs um you tap it for a forest if you pay four you can add six green but you can only span that uh spend that mana to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures. So like Scavenging Ooze, you can use that. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's it's four and a tap. So you're really gaining one. It's just, it's nice if you need that, little, just one extra mana, right? It could be replaced with Faceless Haven too. Faceless Haven is another good one if you want to replace uh, Castle Garenberg with that. And then we run a beautiful 18 Snow Forest. Let's talk about the sideboard real quick. We're just it's just additions there. If you need another Primal Might, you got it. If you need another Grooks Harbinger, you got it. You need another Stone Coil Serpent, you got it. You need another Nesh and Horn Beetle, you got it. You need another Scavenging Ooze, you got it. You need more Ram Through, you got it. You need more Gilded Gifts, you got it. The only thing different in the sideboard, by the way, is Cypher and the Hedge uh, Hedge Hammer, Henge, Cypher and the Henge Hammer. This one's pretty nasty. Uh, it's a two drop whenever Cypheron Henjammer attacks another target creature gets X plus X until end of turn where X is Cypheron's power. So depending how much you boost Cypheron, Cypheron, whatever you want to call this, you can boost another creature just as much and it can it's going to be pretty deadly. And that, my friends, is the green powerhouse. Have fun with it. Deckless in the bottom. Hope you have a good day. We'll see you later, Zaddies.